Hi, I'm John Atak, and today I'm going to talk about Scientology's relationship to Christianity. It's often claimed that Scientology is eclectic, which is to say that you can belong to a, another faith and still be a practicing Scientologist. Indeed, Hubbard even published a policy letter called A Letter to a Roman Catholic, where he explains this idea that you can be a Roman Catholic and you can be a Scientologist. This is not in fact true. The fundamental principles of Scientology are in complete contradiction to ideas in Christianity. So again, have a look at a few of those. There is a rare edition of a book which, when it was published, was called Notes on the Lectures, and then was renamed the Phoenix Lectures, and another book called Notes on the Lectures was published. This original book, which is from 1954 and was printed in South Africa, has a statement that didn't exist, doesn't exist anywhere else. Hubbard says that once everyone in the universe has been cleared, God will be found hiding under a rock. So that's his attitude towards God at that time. In 1954, Hubbard published an article called uh, Duplication, in which he said, it's utterly beneath contempt to tell a man he must repent that he is evil. Religion does much to keep the assumption in re-stimulation being basically a control mechanism. You will find the cross as a symbol all over the universe and the Christ legend as an implanting in pre-clears, uh, in people generally, a million years ago. So the Christ legend is an implant, which is to say that it's something that was hypnotically put into the spirit of Satan uh, to be believed and is not true. And that religion is a control mechanism. And he would, of course, around this time, actually seek to establish Scientology as a religion in 1954. In a 1958 article called A Scientologist, it says, A Scientologist is a first cousin of the Buddhist, a distant relative to the Taoist, a feudal enemy to the enslaving priest. So Scientologists are enemies of Christian priests. In 1959, in a bulletin called Technically Speaking, Hubbard said, Historical note, the whole Christian movement is based on the victim. They won by appealing to victims. We can win by converting victims. Christianity succeeded by making people into victims. We can succeed by making victims into people. Then, in 1963, we have the marvellous bulletin, Heaven, which originally was a public-issued bulletin and then was made confidential for rather evident reasons. In this bulletin of the 11th of May 1963, Ron Hubbard says, yes, I've been to heaven and so have you. It was complete with gates, angels and plaster saints and electronic implantation equipment. So there was a heaven after all, which is why you are on this planet and were condemned never to be free again until Scientology. And further, based on over a thousand hours of research auditing, which is him auditing himself or, or seeking to remember past life memories, analysing the facsimiles or pictures of the reactive mind, and with the help of a Mark V electrometer, uh, it can be shown that heaven is a false dream and that the old religion was based on a very painful lie a cynical betrayal. Christianity is based upon a very painful lie, a cynical betrayal. In 1968, during the lectures for the infamous Operating Thetan Section 3 course, uh, which is where we were introduced to Prince Zenu and told that 75 million years ago uh, we were all brought to Earth and blown up in volcanoes so that we could be implanted with false memories and clusters of spirits, body thetans. During that series, which was given on the Scotman, his uh, flagship at the time, in Corfu Harbour, in fact, he said, somebody on this planet, about 600 BC, before Christ, found some pieces of R6, which is the reactive mind which controls people. I don't know how they found it, either by watching Mad Men or something, but since that time, they have used it and it became what is known as Christianity. 
the man on the cross, there was no Christ. The Roman Catholic Church, through watching the dramatisation of people, picked up some little fragments of R6, the implanted um, memories, false memories of 75 million years ago. So there was no Christ. Hardly compatible with Christianity. In the same series of lectures on the 3rd of October 1968, also the Christian Church used and uses implanting, which is hypnosis fundamentally. These gangsters, the original Christians, were the Nicomidians from Lower Egypt who were chased out for criminal practices implanting officials. They took over the Nicene Creed before the year zero, invented Christ and implanted their way to power. Now, that bulletin is called uh, Confidential Resistive Cases Former Therapy. And just on a point of interest, they took over the Nicene Creed in 600 BC. Well, the Nicene Creed comes from the Council of Nicaea, which was in 325 AD. So I believe in God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, believed by Catholic, Orthodox and Protestant churches. And finally, this comes from the final OT level, the, the highest level in Scientology. It was on that level for only a week or so. And Jesse Prince, who was running Scientology's technical procedures, its counselling procedures at this time, gave a splendid lecture at Toronto at our Getting Clear seminar in June 2015. You can hire the video for about three dollars um, and, and Jesse is absolutely sparkling on it and he confirms that this was indeed the OT8, the highest level of Scientology and that bulletin reads and, and people who have done, who, who did the course at that time have confirmed this is true. I when I first saw it, which was actually in a, I think an affidavit by Steve Fishman, didn't believe it possible that Hubbard could have said this but it has now been confirmed. No doubt you are familiar with the Revelation section of the Bible, the book of Revelation, where various events are predicted. Also mentioned is a brief period of time in which an arch enemy of Christ, referred to as the Antichrist, will reign and his opinions will have sway. This Antichrist represents the forces of Lucifer, literally the light bearer or light bringer. Lucifer being a mythical representation of the forces of enlightenment. My mission could be said to fulfil the biblical promise represented by this brief Antichrist period, which is to say that he is claiming to be the Antichrist, the Lucifer himself. Um, this is consistent with a magical working, called the Babylon working, a ceremony that he performed in 1946 with Jack Parsons in Los Angeles, um, which you can read about, but you can actually don't have to read it. You can go and watch a video called Hubbard in the Occult on this site about Hubbard's involvement with this, where they sought to bring the Antichrist into being to end the Christian era, uh, very much in keeping with his teacher, Alistair Crowley. So the simple answer to the question, I'm sure that somebody on Facebook will have irritated Spike by saying, uh, no, you can't be a Christian and a Scientologist. And they're absolutely right. You cannot be a Christian and a Scientologist. You cannot be a Jew and a Scientologist, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Taoist, follower of any religion. Because Scientology has a very specific set of beliefs that you must accept as true to be part of the standard technology of Scientology. So, Scientology, not necessarily a very good idea. My name is John Atak, and thank you very much for spending these minutes with me. Thanks a lot. See you again soon. Goodbye. Hi, John here. Thanks for watching. We'd appreciate it very much if you would click like, as well as subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Every dollar helps, and we welcome new patrons on Patreon. Or you can make a one-off payment with any currency through PayPal. Thanks so much. Scientology. Not necessarily a very good idea.